So we gotta take that exhaust out. We'll get that taken out. We'll get these get the oil and gas tank out. I'm not sure how much there's still gas in there. So we'll get that removed. So let's uh work on getting that exhaust out and then we'll work on that. Okay, so we've got a hose clamp there to get undone and a hose clamp. And back there to get undone. That one is always a pain. But let's get that one undone. Those are five sixteenths. Let's see if we can get in there. That's why this drill, this angle wrench helps a lot. Okay, we're gonna have to give a lot of, a lot of pull. Let's we'll do a lot of pulling and shake and wiggling to get this. There we go. So that's off. Okay. And then we'll just and just I don't think that should have been that tight. Let's try to get that. This one's always a pain. Because this pipe can get hot and the hose can stay, can kind of seize to the. I'm going to cut this zip tie off of the speedometer. anyway so that is out and we'll take this clamp off and we'll send that when we do that pipe and the exhaust and we'll get those repowder coated but that is out so we can give it a good cleaning later so you guys see how messy and dirty that is looks like a battery bolt be amazed what you find inside a hole of a ski tools bolts money who knows what you'll find that's our grounding strap we don't want to lose that we'll throw that in our pile So, let's get my hands clean and we will get the electrical box out. We'll get a lot of hoses and stuff here to disconnect. Let me grab my light. So, as you can see, gray fuel lines. She's all pretty crusty. Look at how messy she is. We do have gas in there. Not a lot. We might be able to pull this tank out pull this tank out and um, get the gas out of it that way. We got a hose clamp here to undo and there for the filler neck. All those hoses for the um, gas lines, filter there. And oh, it's always a pain because we have to unbolt some of the steering to get back up there where, that, where their fuel selector is. Um, which is a pain it doesn't it's just 
it's just two 13 millimeter bolts but it's still a hassle routing these lines back doing that loop you want to do that so you can pull the tank forward and out and have that extra line but we'll get these see which one we'll just disconnect everything for now get all these connectors disconnected it's hard to get these tank straps done with one hand There should be one over the in the rear of the uh, oil tank. We'll get to that one. We'll just make sure we're all disconnected. We'll get this next. Let's see. This one's always Jeez, the tank wants to come completely forward. We're almost off of there. Okay. I'm gonna work on getting this. Okay. Now this has another hose that goes down inside that. Okay, I'm gonna get this off. Okay, so I used both hands, I was able to pull that off. Hard to do it with just one hand. We'll get those clamps tight, and we'll throw that in our parts bin. We'll get that cleaned up as well later. Now these, these tanks do come out the front. They do come out the front. Okay, so we're catching back there. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is take the uh, take the lines off the filter. Let's see if I can get those. Push that tank back. I'm trying not to break the fitting, the nipples off the filter. There we go. Probably easier to take the filter off too. We'll get to that. Okay. Let's see if we can get these lines off this baffle. Now, these lines have been monkeyed with because those are hose clamps and they're not otica clamps so someone's been in there before but they didn't change the lines this is one of those, those issues where someone's replaced the engine but they didn't replace the gas lines or the oil lines which just really bugs me you will have to excuse the mess here Trying to find there we go quarter inch drive unless they're a weird metric hose clamp okay 
Okay, so we got our quarter inch drive. Let's take these off the baffle one at a time. Heck of a job. I just don't understand how they still have gray fuel lines. Okay, all those lines are off. And look at that. We're placed six, looks like six, 16, 2003. So this is a newer tank. So in 2003, they replaced the tank, but they didn't replace the lines. And normally they scratch an X somewhere by the post, but this is so dirty. The dealers will scratch an X somewhere on the by by the post when they replace the gas tank. Uh, so I'm not getting a new free gas tank for this one. That's not, that kind of sucks. Okay. I need a We still got a zip tie in there holding that stupid fuel baffle power cord on. Get this tank out of here. Hey, up there's still plenty of gas, another two gallons or so. We set it up like that. And then we will get that baffle out. Two five or five sixteenths for the hose clamp. Yep. We got some zip ties up there to cut. I said we'll get a that bracket. There's I think there's just those two or might be a third bolt down there. We'll get those cracked loose and then we can get to that that switch, selector switch. And look how crusty she is, guys. Okay, we've got some here to disconnect. We want to take as much electrical out as possible for that gray box. I 
Uh, I had to get that with two hands. Okay, so I got got that done. Okay, so we got all three of these disconnected. But it looks like yeah, we've got un we gotta depin these two here. Pretty stupid. We wanna get our goal is to get the electrical box out, the gray box. That's our goal. I think we're all disconnected here. Look at that hose clamp here, or hose zip tie done there. Okay. Let's see what we can do to get this gray box out. Okay, we've got our tab here to push. Let's cut this zip tie here. one down here to cut for the positive starter cable okay put that on that side of the cable Let's see what we're we got a zip tie here to do up in here to do and I can't see Desk post there. Let's see if we can crack this loose. Nope, we can't get that loose. Oh, I have to break that free with a branch. have left is this desk post I like the other 90 I like some of the other ones where they have actually a split here this one you actually have to fall it back into the box and disconnect from the box but let's see if we can get a pliers on that and get that off So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of this uh, go, going through on this uh, 96 GTI. Um, so far, we've got a lot done. We've removed the jet pump and drive shaft. Uh, that was a pain. We got the uh, water uh, box exhaust out. We got uh, oil drained, oil pumped out. We got the gas tank removed. There's still gas in that for us to pump out. Um, we got the engine removed, of course. Uh, we, got all, we got the gray electrical box and all the harness out. Um, so we've made some progress. Um, as you see here are our carbs. These will get rebuilt. We'll get, a, we'll get parts for the carbs and the pumps. 
we'll get that ordered from OSD Marine. Uh, Mick Grillo at OSD Marine. He is currently on vacation. Today is May 5th. He won't be back until the 9th or 10th. So we'll get stuff ordered uh, from him. Um, until then, we will continue on cleaning this machine. We might tackle removing some of these old graphics. Um, yeah, so there's still a lot to do as far as cleaning goes. We'll clean that gas tank. Uh, again, that gas tank was replaced in, uh, looks like 6-16-2003, so we're not getting a new gas tank. Very disappointed because whoever replaced the gas tank, they didn't replace the gray gas lines. Um, but someone had been in there before and they put hose clamps on the gas lines because they didn't have the, the stock OEM Oedeker clamps. Um, so I'm guessing whoever did this, they also put in a, that, a different engine with different mounts because uh, it didn't have the standard bed plate that most of the 96 GTIs have the earlier years. It had the outer mount, which was introduced in some of the later years, I think in 98 or or 2000s, they introduced that mount. Um, so the engine had been replaced at some time, and of course the tank had. Um, so this thing has had some bad luck. Um, so they, they swapped in that engine. Maybe it was a rebuilt engine. Maybe it was a new engine. But it's apparently it's seized up. It won't turn. Um, but we'll get a new one, a rebuilt engine from Peter at Fox Valley Power Sports. And we'll be mounting that back in with the st standard uh, bed plate. Um, that, I have several of those in stock uh, available from other rebuilds. Um, but we'll get that done. We'll get the carbs rebuilt. We'll get a new rotary valve. Um, and we'll hit up any other oddball parts. We'll hit up Nick at OSD or uh, Nick at Westside Power Sports in Wayzata, Minnesota. Um, hit up him for some other parts that I need. Um, check them out. Um, and of course, if you need your engines rebuilt, you need a top end kit or full engine rebuilt, hit up Peter at Fox Valley Power Sports. He's in Cary or Cary, Illinois, or Lake of the Hills, Lake of the Hills, I think, in uh, Illinois. Um, a link to his website will be in the description. Uh, so check him out. Tell him Glenn sent you at GC Extreme. Um, we have a little bit left to do on that. We'll get this fuel selector switch removed. All the gas lines out will get washed out. Um, so continue continue watching for more videos, more episodes on this project. And um, I really appreciate it. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Please subscribe. I also have a Patreon account now. Uh, Patreon at GC Extreme. Um, you can subscribe for as little as $3 a month if my videos have helped you. Um, do projects and uh, on your own machines um, but I appreciate the support um, I want to keep this sport live and going I want to keep these old two strokes going don't like to really part them out um, so if this hull is in great shape pretty much so we're going to get this thing back on the water and hopefully it'll see many more years of use um, so again hit the like button subscribe Thanks again, guys. Peace out. Hi, this is Amanda for GC Extreme. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what you saw, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks. Bye.